Okay, so what you're looking at here is a keynote slide, but it could be done in PowerPoint as well. And there's no animation effect. So there's no animation effect inside this slide or between slides. This is obviously many, many different slides, maybe five different slides that are just put on a loop. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So this is one way. And then the other way is just basically two slides. As you can see, most of the elements are just going back and forth. So that was just between two slides. There's no special effect, but you'll see that if you have lots of different slides, each slide is more like a like a photograph when you're using cutout animation like they used to do in the old days. So anyway, the one on the on the left side is maybe I guess five or six different kind of movements for each slide. And then I just repeated those. So it's maybe 25 or so slides on a loop because you notice the train and the hand are more natural. The train comes in and then goes out and then the hand kind of goes down and then up again even on the right one, on the right side. So on the right side, it's just two slides, as you can see. It's just back and forth, except for the train and the hand. And this is called cutout animation, which is a traditional kind, even before computers. For example, when I was a kid, I used to watch Monty Python, and I loved how Terry Gilliam used um, just cutouts. He would just use magazines or catalogs, whatever he, he could find, a lot of vintage stuff, and he'd just cut that out. And then taking pictures of you know each little movement, I'm not sure how many frames per second. It wasn't, I don't even think it was 24. I think it was much less than that. Because you see, it's a real kind of really analog sort of textured feel to it. I love that kind of old animation. So we can kind of, you know, simulate that. So I used a halftone. You don't have to use a halftone kind of cutout image, but I just did that for something different. So you can't use a halftone or halftone doesn't exist inside PowerPoint or Keynote. As far as I know, you can use something like Photoshop or Canvas. So I thought I should do the free one. So, so just use the presentation mode in Canva and I think that's still free so you go to presentation mode and then choose screen right at the bottom you see it says screen right over here and then if you use screen you get this these halftone options so you can just bring in your photo so I'll just bring the photo in so I used a cutout of myself presenting at Microsoft many years ago so you choose the image and then just click on halftone and then you want to adjust it using the halftone scale if you go to the far left you get really big dots but if you go to the far right, they're too fine, or they're very fine, which might be fine. <laughs> it might be okay with you. So I kind of go something kind of in the middle. And then you save that, and then just go to Share and Download. And you can save it as a JPEG or as a PNG file. Okay, and then bring that into PowerPoint or to Keynote. So don't worry about the white part from the slide. We're not going to use that make it a little bit bigger. I'm just going to use the cutout here of the presenter. So go to the shape and then pen tool. And then we're just going to click around that. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but just do as well as you can with this. It's kind of like scissors. So, you know, it's not going to be perfect with scissors, but it's okay. I'm not trying to make it look realistic. It's not just a kind of an animation anyway. So you choose the selection, then go to image, mask with selection, and then you'll get this. So you choose the background image and the new selection that you just did, and you do that effect. Now with this, I, I copied it right now. So I just made a copy. So Command C to make a copy of this. But then I go to line, and I want to put a white border around it. But in Keynote, at least, the border, if you make it really large, it just comes in and takes away your image. So I'm going to keep that as a background. So I made that, and then I just pasted that, because I just copied it, right? So I just pasted it now back, and now I have this nice little outline. And so it's two, two different files, right? But you can just put them together. So group those together, and then I have it, right? And then I have this kind of thing. And now we're ready to animate using, let's, in this case, let's just use two slides, and I'll show you how I animated between two slides, not using any kind of special effect. Okay, so let me show you how I did it. So here we have the, the first slide. So that's where it all begins, right? So here's all the, the elements here, right? And then all we do is copy and paste that. And so that's going to be our base, just these two slides. So I need to change everything. So just hold on the Mac the Command key, and you can kind of turn things as you like. And then this one is going to keep continuing. But for now, I can just do like that. I'll make the brain move like this and the computer like that. I could even move these elements separately. So you can see just between these two, I just go back and forth with my finger. And yep, that's great, right? And then the train. Let's see the train is here. So I'll just have it kind of just come in, just a skosh, something like that, right? So you can see it come in. And then... 
just copy these. Copy, and then we're just gonna paste them. Okay, so I have 14 different ones here. The actual ones were, I think, 26, but just as an example. So we went here, right? And we're just gonna go back. So if I just hold it down, you can see it works, but we want the train to go across and the hand up in the upper right to go down and then back up again. So there are different ways you could do this, but I'll just go like that. And then for the next one, bring the train a little bit further. So I'm doing this really quickly. So, and then the hand, I kind of go back and do the hand later. So I'll just do the train now. You get the idea. You can kind of check it. Okay, and then gone. And this one will have it gone. Right? And now let's go back and do the hand. And then it will go back. Right? So if I just flick through these, you can see that everything is moving across and yeah, that'll work. And it starts back up on top like that. Okay, so select everything, select all the slides, and then we want them to move or to transition automatically and at 0 0.20 seconds. Okay, and then it's the slide 15 to 28. So we're gonna export those. So export as a movie, 15 to 28. And none of this stuff in here matters because we already have this transition and set to 0 0.20 for all the slides, right? So we save that. Okay, so let's take the video that we just exported, put it back up there. You can see it's a video now. And then uh, turn on loop. So under format and movie and loop. And let's see how this looks. Looks okay. And I did that really quickly. So just think about ways you could use this. For this one, you know, if I just do, you know, the two slides with no animation in between, but we just go back and forth, you get this kind of effect. And I kind of like it. It's just stop motion kind of feel. But I wondered at the same time, I think it was 0 0.02 seconds or 0 0.03 seconds, but with a magic move or in PowerPoint, a morph in between. So it's a really fast morph or magic move. And this is what it looks like, which is a very different look. It's a little bit weird, but you, you could imagine doing this for like, a, I don't know, it's just a very different feel like up and down. You could have like a hippopotamus kind of going up and down or something. But a magic move, you know, really, really fast, like 0.02 or 0.03 uh, would work. But those are just different ways to do it. But I really like this old way, sort of nostalgic way of the, the paper cutouts. And you get this sort of stop motion effect. There's just myriad of ways you could use this. And not just for presentations, but for actually, instead of, for example, in, um, in DaVinci Resolve using the fusion, which can be kind of difficult to learn for for most people, unless you have the time to put into it, you can use Keynote or PowerPoint. And I think in the world where AI is ubiquitous and everyone's kind of looking the same, it's really great if you can do these kind of things that are individual that you'll, you'll never see anywhere else because you did this yourself. Mm -hmm.